Today, we're diving into the top five pharmaceutical stocks that you should keep your eye on. We have an exciting lineup for you, including some industry giants and a few hidden gems. Let's dive in. Welcome back, guys. Thanks so much for joining me today to talk about pharmaceutical stocks. There are some big, more established names on this list with some growth opportunities mixed in. Um, but before we get started, I'm going to want to hear what you guys have to say on each of these. So I want to know buy, sell, or hold. Don't forget to include that. To our viewers, we want to know what you think as well. So let us know if you're following along and what you would do with these stocks or if you have other ones on your mind that maybe we didn't mention. But let's dive into it. Chris, first on our list is Bristol Myers Squibb and not really making me take notice with this one, but maybe you can change my attention towards that. What do you have for us? Okay, so I'll kick this off. Uh, you know, there's there are reasons why some investors are hesitant to invest in Bristol Myers Squibb. Mm -hmm. Stocks down about 19% this year. Um, some of that has to do with the fact that they've got some drugs with expiring patents. The last earnings report was kind of a clunker. Fair enough. Uh, but we're looking at 2023. And in 2023, drug discovery is really the name of the game. Uh, AI is going to be a big part of that as pharmaceutical companies are looking to make the drug discovery faster and more efficient without compromising on safety. And that's where Bristol Myers and their partnership with Schrodinger comes in. Uh, the company has a, a number of drugs in their pipeline. This is going to, theoretically, this will uh, in, speed up that process of getting those drugs through the clinical trial phase. It doesn't mean they don't do the clinical trials. It just means they can get the drugs into the clinical trial phases faster. That allows investors to start looking at some attractive fundamentals. It trades at just eight times forward earnings. Um, and it has an attractive dividend with a yield around 3.8%. You know, right now, I would probably think of Bristol Myers as a hold, uh, particularly if you already, you know, if you own the stock and you're collecting that dividend. But I also think that investors should have this on their watch list as a potential buy. Okay, fine, Chris. Maybe you did push my attention towards it just a little bit. I'll be keeping an eye on that one, thanks to you. All right, uh, Thomas, here is a name that I hear every day. It's day after day. It's a favorite by many fund managers and individual investors. I'm talking about AbbVie, if you didn't guess. Tell us why this is on the list. Yeah, AbbVie is a great stock. It's uh, the developmental side of Abbott Laboratories was spun off about 10 years ago. Um, it might as well be a dividend king. Abbott's a dividend king. Um, AbbV has been paying substantial dividends since it was spun off and can continue to do so. Um, as Chris mentioned, the patent cliff is a big story in pharma right now. And for AbbV, that means Humira. But the news in 2023 is that Humira sales aren't falling as much as expected because doctors and patients are slow to switch over. That's good news for like legacy revenue. And the pipeline is also ro robust. Uh, some of their newer products like Rinvoke and Skyreezy are also advancing pretty well and making up the difference in the Humira sales loss. So I think that uh, AbbV is definitely a buy. You know, I do see commercials on my TV all the time about um, those different um, drugs that you're talking about. So that's top of mind for me when I think about it. Um, but next up is J and J. I've seen many articles on J and J written for um, Market Beat by you, Chris. Um, and I know you like it, but it's not a recent development, as we know. So tell us why are you so bullish on J and J? Yeah, I mean Johnson Johnson. I I guess you'd say I mean it's not a hill I'm dying on, but I continue to believe that the stock is a buy, or at least it, certainly it belongs on a list of pharmaceutical stocks that should be on the top of investors' watch lists. Um, the company com continues to beat on earnings and revenue, not only sequentially, but year over year. Um, and it's got a dividend that yields about 3% right now. Analysts are lukewarm on it. Stock's down about 10% for the year. Um, one of the things that's concerning investors is now that there has been a resolution to the long running talc lawsuit, uh, how is the company going to pay for that? And there's concerns that there could be a dividend cut coming down the pipe in the future. So far, there's nothing about the company's earnings and revenue, again, that suggests that's imminent. That is a concern, though, that's hanging over the stock. 
Uh, I'll also grant you that the stock looks a little expensive right now. It's trading at about 31 times earnings um, at a time when the S&P is trading around 20 to 22 times earnings. So that's a little expensive. But if you look at the forward earnings, it's down around 15, and that's a lot more attractive as far as investors go. Great insights on that one. Uh, thanks for sharing about Johnson & Johnson. Thomas, I think most of our viewers would have guessed Pfizer would be on this list. The vaccine was a catalyst, obviously, but that revenue has now come down. So what can you tell us about this? Yeah, right. Pfizer, <clears throat> Pfizer is another great name in pharma. And right now it's a value compared to its peers. It trades about uh, 10 times earnings and it's yielding above 5%. Uh, like with the other pharma companies, it's facing a patent cliff too, but its pipeline is robust and it's got a fair number of new products coming out that should help to offset that. Um, as you mentioned, the real concern now is the COVID cliff. Uh, COVID sales dropped significantly, revenues down about 50% year over year, but better than expected. Uh, within that, um, the non-COVID business is still growing, so that fundamental aspect is in, is in good shape. Um, the stock is trading at a a multi-year low and well below the analyst's low price target. So I think there's nothing but upside. Uh, Pfizer is a buy. All right. Last name on this list that we're talking about today is Merrick. Um, it's an old established name that never seems to go out of favor or does it. Uh, Chris, why don't you fill us in on this? Uh, so again, yes, Merck's an established name. For, for Merck, uh, it's all or at least mostly about Keytruda, which is its blockbuster oncology drug. Um, there's good news and bad news here. The good news is um, Keytruda continues to be approved for different types of cancers, which is good because we've been talking about a patent cliff. Well, this extends the patents for Keytruda into different categories longer. That means more exclusive opportunities for revenue and earnings for Merck. The bad news is right now, uh, I suppose, is that Katruda's kind of under the watchful eyes of regulators who are looking to limit the amount that they can charge or that they can charge for Medicare patients. So there could be some cost pressures coming in that regard. Uh, bigger picture with Merck, what I'm seeing is they've got, I think, 30 drugs that are in phase three clinical trials. I think they've got a total of 80 drugs that are in phase two clinical trials. That's an enormous pipeline. And that means they've got a pretty much steady stream of drugs that are going to be coming online within the next year, two years. To me, Merck just looks like a buy right now. It, it, there's just so much opportunity here with the stock. And like I said, Keytruda, it's an oncology drug at a time when um, the current administration is making a big push as a moonshot to find a cure for cancer. Kind of a no-brainer one here. All right, Merck, great insights. I had to say that one again because I think I pronounced it Merrick and we know that people are going to come for me in the comments for that one. So my apologies. Uh, but we all hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of pharmaceutical stocks. We're exploring opportunities and potential challenges within each company. We hope this discussion has provided you with valuable insights for your investment decisions. If this video helped you at all, we would really appreciate a like and a subscribe so we continue to grow this channel and give you the insights you need. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. We'll talk to you next time. Yes.